just noticed how my glasses do. I thought I'd do just a little studio tour. Um, this would be about one third of my studio. One third would be downstairs in my basement where I keep the pottery wheel and all the clay. Um, that's where I make stuff. And then the other third um, is a community studio that I pay to use where I do my glazing and firing and where I get to hang out with other potters, which is nice because we inspire each other. And um, a lot of them share their knowledge very freely. So I've been really blessed to have that and also have my alone time at home. Um, and then this is the other third, which is where I keep the finished pots and take pictures of them um, and kind of just do my final things before I send things out if someone orders something. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around and just show you the space. Okay, so keep in mind, if you've ever lived in a small house, that um, no space can be used for just one thing at a time. So that's what's going on here. We have a lot of storage um, projects. I'm painting some shelves and crates and stuff. <laughs> so it all gets mixed together. Um, obviously, I play trains too. But yeah. um, okay, here's some stuff that I brought home from the firing studio last night. And I'm really excited about some of it. Um, here's our fig tree. See, this is taking over my space, but you know, what can you do? And this is the best window in the house to take photos by. So here's my little photo setup. This um, piece of paper is my background. It's a card, what's the word for that? Poster board. It's just plain white poster board, um, which you don't crease, but you um, lay it so that there's a curve and then that will create the plain white background with no shadows. Um, and then I, this is kind of half a light box basically. And I've got this piece of, um, foam board, which reflects light back, back onto the pieces. So that's kind of how it works. Isn't that cool? Um, still room for improvement in my photo setup, but that works right now. Um, Got this great closet over here which is housing my pottery which is nice i take photos of it right there and then i can just put it over here and wait for a sale or um re-photograph it if i feel like my photos aren't good enough so it's fairly organized not perfect but most of this stuff is already photographed um, and then i try to separate out the things that aren't photographed yet um, Got some jewelry here that I'm going to be looking to sell pretty soon. I've decided I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Oh, I need to focus. Um, chaos. Not quite chaos. These are old pots that I just dug up and thought, oh, well, these are perfectly good. So I'll get those up on Etsy. Um, it's kind of where I do my measuring since my pieces are one of a kind. That's the way it works right now. I want them all to be one of a kind. I want them all to be made by hand. Um, I'm working on ways to streamline that a little bit without sacrificing the artistry of it. But anyway, so I measure all of their dimensions, including capacity. Um, and I do that by pouring water into them and then pouring it back into a measuring cup. So that takes a lot of time. But if I do a bunch at once, it works okay. Um, and then I put a little piece of paper in each one with a tiny little terrible drawing. I'm an artist so that you would think that this is easy for me, but look at that. That's my drawing of this picture. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but somehow I'm not good at that part. <laughs> Sketching. All right. So there's all the measurements on there. Um, there's some more stuff. Um, these are some of the things I got back last night from the kiln and I'm so excited about them. I saw this glaze. I planned this glaze. I knew what I was going for, but somehow it just came out and I, I just fell in love with it. I just love it so much. And I instantly saw a vision of different pieces, different pieces that you can mix and match in these colors. Um, yeah, bowls and plates and I have several of these bowls and then I have, I'll move over here, I have uh, this one, which it's the same glazes as those other ones, but it has an extra layer on top of an ash glaze. Nice, let's break this. An ash glaze, which causes the rivulets. Can you hear my child calling for me right now, pitifully? He's being taken care of. Do not worry. His dad is taking care of him, but he thinks that he needs to be up here. 
He loves to be involved. It's really wonderful. Sometimes makes me crazy, but it's really wonderful. Anyway, so this ash glaze is just over the top. Basically, that's the only thing that this is missing that's different than this one. Um, so for an experiment, I knew it would run, so I put it on this taller piece so that it wouldn't reach the bottom and glue, to, glue itself to the kiln shelf. People get mad when that happens because then whoever's unloading the kiln has to clean that up and chisel it. It's basically like melted glass stuck to something, so you don't want to do that. Um, anyway, I just think this glaze combo has it all. It's got the warm colors. It's got the cool colors. It's got the texture and the rivulets. It's got the smoothness. I just think it's great. Anyway, expect to see more of that. I hope you like it. Um, that's my little half a studio tour. There's my bookkeeping, which I don't keep up with very well right now. And I think it's basically what I have to show right now. I don't really have much of a cute space, but I have functional space and that's what works right now. Because I have little kids and it's just hard to do everything. <laughs> so anyway. 